please, yeah, go ahead. Oh, well, thank you for introducing me. Well, hello, I'm Roberta. And well, as Martin said, I'm a PhD at the University of York. And today I'm going to talk about this, well, optimal coupling for a jumpy brown motion on the circumference of the unit circle. So now let me see if it works. Yeah. So, well, first um, I'm going to introduce the process that we considered. So we consider the continuous time stochastic process defined as one over root two bt plus pi and t and then mod two pi, where bt is a standard Brillouin motion. The coefficient in front of it is just for the convenience of the calculations. And nt is an independent Poisson process of rate lambda. So in practice, what we have with this process is a Brennan motion moving on the circumference of a unit circle. And then at times given by this Poisson process, it will jump to, <clears throat> to the opposite point on the circumference that we, it will continue the, to diffuse from that point. And the first question that we had about this process is how we could couple two of these processes starting from two different points. So let's see first what the coupling is in general. So a coupling is defined as a pair of processes x, x prime defined on a single probability space where these two processes are copies of the process that we are interested in studying, started from different states. And so when we construct a coupling, we give a set of rules with which these two processes will move with diffuse. And we are interested in the first time where the processes will meet at the same point simultaneously. And so we call that time the coupling time. And then we can also construct the coupling so that after the coupling time, the two processes will always stay together. And the reason why we are interested in constructing couplings for processes is the coupling inequality. So this is all that you see here. And the coupling inequality tells us that we can bound the distance between the distributions of the, of the two processes. We can bound this distance from above uh, by with the tail probability of the coupling time. And a special type of couplings that we are also interested in is the maximal coupling, which is the coupling that realizes the equality in the coupling inequality for all times t. Now, in general, working with maximal couplings is quite difficult because usually we have to uh, consider non-coadaptive couplings. So they're in general, in general, they're not co-adapted, where a coadaptive coupling is a coupling um, for which there exists a filtration such that the processes that we are coupling are Markov chains with respect to the same filtration. And so the class of coadaptive coupling is the class that we are going to restrict to. So we're not going to consider non coadaptive couplings. And well, I have also an example here. Uh, this is an important um, coupling for the binary motion and we're going to see it later as well. So um, if we consider two Brennan motions starting from two different points and I have a simulation here. So we consider two Brennan motions, while well, one started from zero and the other started from a certain point y, we make one of the two Brennan motion be the reflection of the other one. We respect uh, you. Yeah, sorry. Sorry, sorry, Roberta. Yeah. I have a question. If you mm -hmm. go back to the first slide in which you in introduced the coupling, um, yeah. yeah, this one. Mm -hmm. Can you say, because you are just looking at these two, so you are taking this coupling between these two processes, x and x prime, yeah. and you're just looking, if you're looking at the total variation norm, but you're looking at, you know, you are looking at the distributions of these two processes, right? Mm -hmm. the probability of xt in some a, say, and xt prime in some, some and, and the same set, a, say. Yeah. So, but my question is, why do you need to define it on the same probability space? Can you not, I mean, this, the, 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 there is nothing here that stops you from these processes being defined on different probability spaces. So, mm -hmm. so is that, that's what I, 
Yeah, so, um, so, so this is the idea of coupling. So we want to consider these two processes at, like practically as two copies of the same process. And, and so the, the process that we define as the coupling will be, um, so we need this to be on the same probability space. So that we can. So uh, you have, I don't know if I'm making um, a mistake, but if you have like one process and another process, you can always take the, you know, pro you can always take the bigger space and you will still, so it, that way you get uh, the same probability space. Mm -hmm. So is that what you mean? Or do you mean that these have to like start on the same probability space? So that's more what I wanted to ask you. Yeah, well, that would be probably, the, so I, I didn't give a very rigorous definition of the coupling inequality. Here we should also look at the marginal distribution of these two processes with respect to the big space. Okay. And so we will need to have the marginal distributions to be the same with respect to the, to the big probability space okay. where we are defining the coupling. Okay. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so, so here I just gave it a very rough idea of what we okay. do with coupling. Okay, thank you. Oh, um, okay, so I was here. So, well, so we make the second Brennan motion to be the reflection of the first one. Um, we respect to the middle point between the two starting states, that in our case will be y over two. And so we continue reflecting until, and the coupling time will be the first time when these two processes meet at the reflection point, well, at, at the point where we have the reflection. And what we have for this coupling is that this coupling is co-adapted and is also maximal. So going back to our process, we wanted to define first, so we wanted to construct the coupling first. And to do that, we need to define a second process D. So we consider two of the jumpy brown motions that we have seen started from two different points where B and B prime are standard brown motions and NT and NT prime are Poisson processes with the same parameter lambda. And we define the process D as the distance on the circumference between the two processes. And we can start decoupling looking at the value of D. So first, we assume that x is in the open interval 0 pi. So we, for the moment, we don't consider the case when the two processes start exactly on opposite points. And we start with the reflection coupling. And the times of the jumps uh, will be given by Poisson process of parameter 2 lambda. So when, so we start with the reflection coupling, and when we see a jump, we have two possibilities. If the distance is bigger than pi over two, then we toss a coin. And if we get head, we make the process x jump. If instead we get tails, we make the process x prime jump. And so in both cases, what we see for the process dt is a downward jump over the point pi over two. So we jump to the reflection over pi over two. If instead the distance is less than pi over two, then again, we call it a coin. And if we get head, then we make both the processes jump. Otherwise, they will stay the same point, so they won't jump. And so in both cases, we have the dt doesn't change, and so we stay in the same value. So what we have we're using this construction is that dt diffuses like a standard burn motion in the interval zero pi, with downward jumps over the point pi over two. And so this is the first case. Then if at some point we find that the two processes are, the two processes are exactly at opposite uh, states on the circumference, so x is equal to pi, we consider two possible strategies. So the first strategy is continue with the reflection. So we will, again, uh, applying the reflection coupling until we have the two processes are coupled, which means that the distance will be equal to zero. Otherwise, we use the synchronized coupling. So we keep 
the two processes at always at the same distance pi until we see a jump. And as soon as we see a jump, one of the two processes will jump to the other side of the circumference and so it will meet the other one. And in terms of the distance means that we will keep the distance always at pi and then when we have a jump, d will jump directly to zero. And so uh, we have couple. And the idea behind the choice of these two strategies at the beginning is that if lambda, so the rate of the jumps is small, then we have that the jumps don't happen very often. And so we can expect the reflection coupling to be faster in coupling. While if lambda is bigger, then the jumps happen more often. So it's very likely that we will see a jump soon. And so we will directly jump from pi to zero we couple very soon. So this is the sort of intuitive idea of these two strategies. And well, here I have two simulations of these two couplings just to maybe visualize this better. And this is the simulation for the process DT. So here we are starting from a point here. We start with the reflection coupling, so dt will diffuse in this interval. And then here at some point we will hit pi. And since we are in the reflector coupling, well, we'll just continue reflecting. And here at some point we have a jump. And so dt will jump to the, uh, well, to the reflection over pi over two. And now well, we will continue with the reflection until we hit zero. While with the synchronized coupling, well, again, we start from a certain point. Here we have a jump, so we uh, jump to the reflection point over pi over two, we continue reflection, and at some point we will hit pi. And so here, since we are using the synchronized coupling, dt will stay there until we see a jump that will bring it directly to zero. And so this is the... Um, more or less how these two couplings work. And now that we have the coupling, we want to study the optimality of these two couplings. So the optimality in the sense that these two couplings uh, minimize the expectation of the coupling time. So we wanted to prove it that if that happens, and we are still considering, as I said before, we're still considering the class of, of co-adapted couplings. So, well, first we had to find, if we could, an expression for the expectation of the coupling time. And to do that, we use the discursion theory. So in general, the discursion theory considers, well, for a Markov process on an interval, 0t, where t is a random variable, uh, we consider a recurrent state, A, for a Markov process. And here, again, I have a simulation. And what we do is splitting the diffusion of the process into excursions from A. So for example, here we have that this red portion is, well, it's the process starting from A, we have some diffusion and then we go back to A. So this will be an excursion. And by the strong marker property, we have that these excursions are also all independent. And so what we do with excursion theory is marking these excursions with an independent Poisson process. And then using the distribution of the marks and the law of the excursion, we can calculate the Laplace transform of the time t. And then from there, we can calculate the expectation. And so we applied excursion theory to our process where the point was pi over two. And so while here in, the, in our process, we also have jumps. So we have to consider all these type of uh, excursions that we might have. So for example, we can have an upward excursion that comes back to pi over two without jumps, or again, an excursion that comes back to pi over two, but jumps. And so we will see a portion of the excursion here below pi over two, or we can also have, for example, an excursion that hit pi, so it doesn't come back to pi over two. So an excursion that hits pi, or for example, if we have an excursion that hits pi, but with a jump, we will have that we go up and then we have a jump, and since we are using the reflection, we will hit zero. And so we have coupled. So here we have all different types of excursion for our case. So while applying the excursion theory, what we have is that we managed to find an expression for the expectation of the coupling time 
that we can see here. And the expression for the two strategies is very similar. The only thing that is different is this C lambda, but we managed to find an explicit expression also for this constant. And we found that this constant depends on lambda, <laughs> so on the value of lambda and also on the uh, coupling strategy. And comparing the constants that came out from the two strategies, what we found is that there exists a unique value lambda star for lambda, such that these two constants are exactly the same for the two strategies. And so we, at that point, we wanted to see what happens to the expectation of these two around this point lambda star. So we wanted to compare the two expectations. And what we had is that if lambda is less than lambda star, we have that the reflection coupling is faster in expectation. While the opposite happens if lambda is bigger than lambda star. So the synchronized coupling actually is faster in expectation. So starting from these results of comparing these two couplings, we wanted to see if we could say th something about the optimality in the whole class of co-adapted couplings. And so to do that, we apply the Bellman's optimality principle. And what we actually found is that if lambda is less than lambda star, then actually the reflection coupling is optimal in the class of all co-adapted couplings in the sense that it minimizes the expectation of the coupling time. While if we have the lambda is bigger than lambda star, then it's the synchronized coupling, which is optimal in the class of co-adapted couplings. And then, well, the last observation that we had is since we have seen the maximal coupling at the beginning, where well, we have this coupling is not maximal. And well, to have a maximal coupling, we expect to, to, to need a non co adapted coupling. And so, so this, is, this coupling is not maximal. So, well, that's it for my talk. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Roberta. So we have a few minutes for questions. Uh, if anyone has any questions, please, well, just ask the question or raise your hand, or you can also use the chat. And I have a that. question. Yes, please go ahead, Robin. Uh, thank you for the talk. That was really cool. Okay. I'd like to ask, would, would you know what happens if the jumps aren't uh, all of length pi? Have you looked into that?